our last video, I didn't turn on audio, even though I said into the mic, audio is on. Yes. Audio is now recording. Video, I'm going to check the video again. Yes. Please check it. That's why you need a cameraman. Welcome back to uh, HM and Big E Review Things. Uh, today, we are throwing back to a very old movie. Uh, we are talking about Ben-Hur. Ben-Hur. I think this is truly a movie from a different time where, uh, the, you know, this massive Hollywood epic. Yes. I don't think movies like this exist anymore. It was a nearly four-hour movie. Three Close hours to and four hours. Or something. They yeah. had an intermission. <laughs> where it's like a ten minute in the middle. Yep. Just a title card that says intermission and, and it you, plays and music. I'm trying to fast forward. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but Ben-Hur. Overall thoughts. Well, the Ben-Hur was a movie that my parents, especially my mom, kept telling me to watch as a kid. Yeah. And I told her to basically buzz off because it's old. Why would I watch that? She kept on telling me this is a great movie because obviously when she was a child, she watched this movie. And... Um, you are totally right. It's a movie from a different era of Hollywood, you know, magic. And yes. it's a very long epic. It's, it's <laughs> basically, I mean, if we're going to spoilers for anybody. Yeah, spoilers for this 60-year-old movie, okay? Uh, if you don't want this ruined, turn it off, but it's a 60-year-old movie. Go ahead. I guess it was one of those, it's a movie about a, a Jewish wealthy person named Judah Ben-Hur. Okay, yes. so that's his name. Yeah. Judah Ben-Hur, yes. Judah Ben-Hur, and uh, long story short, he's kind of wrongfully imprisoned, that typical story, mm -hmm. and he rises from from his imprisonment to, to do, you know, good redemptive things. Yeah, yeah, he was a, a wealthy Jewish, essentially an aristocrat, like, yeah. yeah, and it's that fall from nobility, fall from that kind of place of honor. To being a slave? To being a slave, to escaping slavery, earning kind of respect again, and then facing the person who wronged him. That's right. Now, that's then, one movie. Then, <laughs> the second part is... And then an hour after all of that. <laughs> well, he's interspersed in there as another character is Jesus. As Jesus, yes. The movie starts with Jesus. It's in the middle. He's Jesus shows up. And at yeah. the end, it ends with kind of Jesus. Yes, and kind of tangentially... They mention, oh, that, that man and, and that. And I know that's the reason my mother loves this movie. Because it's sort of a, what do you call that? A Christian biopic kind of? Yeah, I think so. I think, I, but I think, you know, in the 60s and I don't know when Ten Commandments came out as well. That was another big movie. Also, Charlton Heston. Um, you know, that biblical movie epic was, was a thing and people really loved it. And so I think this came out at the perfect time for it. They knew the audience wanted something like this. Yeah. And so there was, yeah, the first, I don't know, 10 minutes of the movie is is basically Jesus being born and the wise men visiting him with gifts. and Right. It was almost like, wait, I thought Ben-Hur was... Yeah, yeah. You know, I, wait, who's Charlton Heston playing? Is he yeah, playing is Jesus? He Jesus? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit jarring for me. Yes. Um, I think, the, the whole time I was watching this movie, though, I was thinking that all the Ben-Hur stuff... Was like Gladiator, but yes, I kind of felt Gladiator did a better job of it. Yes, obviously Gladiator, I think, uh, took a lot of inspiration from this movie. Sure, I think, I think it, it, you know, it's backwards to say, it. and so I think, and I think it did do it better because it chopped off all the unnecessary bits, all well, the uh, Jesus bits. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it told. Gladiator told the same story much more efficiently. But the other thing I liked about Gladiator, and it's not just the effects and stuff, but I felt the weight of his of his mm. mistreatment. Mm -hmm. Like Ben Hur, mm -hmm. spoilers, he gets imprisoned because he gets into a like kind of a little argument with his friend who's a, is a Roman captain or something. A tribune. Tribune, and uh, he's leaving. <laughs> He's leaning on a shelf, oh, sorry, uh, a, roof. a roof, and, and uh, a shingle falls. A shingle falls, nearly, uh, I guess, uh, knocking over the governor. He, and he almost dies? He almost dies. And then he gets thrown in prison. But you don't really feel the weight of that betrayal. Like in Gladiator, this guy was a, a, a commander, and yep. he was really close to the, the, the emperor, and, and it was jealousy, and then he, his whole family's wiped out, and he's at that big scene where he's just crying on the field, and then he gets thrown into prison and you really felt like yeah the poor, emotional weight this poor guy yeah you know? but ben hur was like i it's a weird it was like a weird transition maybe hollywood did it back then but it was like a little bit of weird he just thrown in jail 
And then next thing you know, he's on a boat rowing. Yes. And I felt like there was some weird missing parts where like he suddenly was told he's a great charioter. Yes. But they don't ex- they show that he actually done it. Yeah. He didn't practice it. No. Yeah. It wasn't even introduced. It was. It was like this guy's a great charioter. Why not any race for you? And then. Oh my goodness! And then he does it. And then that race, I know, was epic. It was. It was epic, actually. I thought the chariot race. I mean, I think for most people that mention this movie, it's difficult for them not to mention the chariot race because I think that with that. Oh no! That stands. Yeah, that, out. <laughs> that, that most people that watch this movie would mention the chariot race. I think that stands the test of time really well. I think it compares even quite favorably to to modern day action sequences. That was quite captivating. Uh, they actually, I, and I saw some behind the scenes, you know, pictures of kind of how they built it. Yeah, and they, yeah. And they built a massive set. I think at the time it was, it, they built the largest sets that had been ever built for any Hollywood movie. Uh, and, and the Chariot Coliseum or whatever it was that they built was one of them. And they apparently they actually drove cars and actually filmed the live horses and chariots running. Like it's, it's all real, right? It's all real. And I was thinking the whole time I was watching this movie. That that magic is somewhat lost in today's Hollywood, where if they're going to film this scene today, it'd yeah. be like a, a fake screen. horse, yeah, green and screen, green screen, and the guy's going like this. Yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. okay, cut, you know, done. Yeah, I almost wanted this movie to be, and I guess they did redo it, but apparently got banned yes. by critics. Yes, but to to do this kind of movie, you know, magic with modern day effects and blending some of the CGI with mm. some of the stuff, like you could tell, like. It's impressive. I think this movie Very was made impressive. with fifteen million dollars, which is yeah. a lot at the time. Know, yeah. And they had like hundreds of extras on some <laughs> of these scenes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. fully dressed. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't yeah, CGI yeah. that stuff. Yeah, and they gotta they gotta play and they gotta act in front of the crowd. Right, right, right. Um, so a lot of this stuff, this throw, it's kind of like interesting to watch these old movies. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm glad that we're. I mean, I'm I'm happy that I'm going back to watch some of this stuff and we're yeah. able to review some of this stuff. It gives some of this context of kind of how far we've come in the journey that. Hollywood has taken, you know, and uh, well, I think we're going to talk about Lawrence of Arabia next, or I'm going to talk about it next, um, where, yeah, this, there was no other choice than to go on location and shoot. The, you know, the chariot race, we can't CG horses and chariots, they just need to actually run and kind of run alongside each other and bump into each other. That's crazy, to I do mean, that. that's crazy though. They had probably eight sets of four horses yeah, in a yeah. line just to keep them in that line right. for all the, the takes yeah, yeah, and then yeah. to run them and then I mean some of the horses fall and stuff like yeah, yeah, they yeah. Well, and they're like running over things and people and jumping like it, yeah exactly and and I think uh, that was really cool to see yes and actually I mean that chariot race is surprisingly brutal at some points yeah people fall off and get trampled and like there's that one part where like the horses have to jump over another fallen chariot and like Charlton Heston is like thrown I'm sure it's not actually him it's probably a stunt man I don't know Um, but like it's it's, again very captivating action that scene was definitely the highlight definitely the highlight um, unfortunately, the movie is four hours long, so to get that scene, you got to watch three and a half hours, pretty much. To get no, it. no, it's not three and a half hours. It's because after like, that, there is still an hour of oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. the entire story is about this man's fall from nobility and his his earning to 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 earning his keep to fighting that back, and then he gets to face the person who wronged him, and he gets to race him, and and even though the other person is playing nasty. He wins and he triumphs and yay and yeah. people are cheering and he gets and crowned the victor. Been, yeah. <laughs> and then wait, I checked the runtime. There's like an hour left. What yeah. is this hour about? <laughs> the hour's about him trying to reconnect with his family who has somehow has leprosy. Yes. And the only person who cure leprosy is Jesus. So they yes. kind of find Jesus, cure the leprosy, and then he lives happily ever after. Yes. But I don't the last shot isn't even of him. The last it's shot Jesus. Is, <laughs> no, it's it's of the of the mother and the daughter uh, being cured from leprosy, right? I don't remember. Yeah, it's, it's that magic Jesus rain, and it cures them from the leprosy. Okay. Anyway, but there's an hour after the, the real, I feel, I feel the emotional kind of ending of the movie is there. I, I don't, the mother and daughter stuff, or the mother and sister stuff is, they don't invest enough time for you to really care about I didn't it. even recognize the, 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 <laughs> the mother and daughter, really, because I wasn't maybe paying attention. But, yeah, it was weird. It was, like, two movies crammed into yes. one. Yes, Because uh, I thought, okay, if you're going to do that, Ben-Hur is, like, Jesus' brother or something. Right. But it was, like, just some guy who saw Jesus. Yeah, and I thought maybe they were going to try to tell a story, kind of, like, especially because they're clearly trying to go for that religious thing, that it would be kind of like a parallel thing. That there would be a lot of parallels in his life 
to Jesus' life. And but it wasn't really that. Well, the parallel is he helps Je- he he gives Jesus water. He gives Jesus water because Jesus gave him water. But it, no, but yeah, water. and also is it a choose not to choose revenge? Yeah, at at the end, yes, because uh, the his servant tells him of the sermon that she heard from this teacher, this great teacher on the hill, <laughs> yeah. then all of his anger is gone. Right. So, again, three hours, 15 minutes, did it really need to be that long? Maybe it's just my modern eyes, I think but... it's like 345 or 340 or something. If, if yeah. you, I had to watch in two sittings. Oh, I had to watch it in like three or four. <laughs> <laughs> because... Uh, you know, and I remember Katie comes in and she's like, "Why are you watching this old movie?" And I was like, "I'm trying to, you know, you know, watch some of the classics." But man, yes. this is a, a long classic. I will say it was very interesting uh, to see Charlton Heston in his prime. Yeah, this was when he was very young and like really fit, and you can see he's shirtless he a lot in this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's really sweaty and shirtless. Yeah, so I mean, if, if you're if you're criticizing modern Hollywood about you know. Pandering to audiences with having shirtless hunks and you know scantily, ha- apparently this was happening sixty years ago already. <laughs> he was shirtless a lot in this movie, and it wasn't just when he was like the slave. He was yes. shirtless a lot. Yes. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. I. I yeah. Anything else to add? <laughs> no. Okay. What's your final grade on Ben Hur? This, this is this is the, the most. <laughs> it is tied for the most awarded Academy Award film in history. How many Eleven other? wins. Uh, 11 wins, which is tied with Titanic and Return of the King, Lord of the Rings. And so this is like, according to the Academy, this is the best of the best. What is your grade? (laughs) I I guess who I am today as a modern day film film watcher, I I mean, I guess I could probably give it a B plus. Just because of all these things we talked about. Maybe... If I was 80 years old and a nostalgic factor, I'd give it an A+. Plus. But it's just, it was a little bit yeah. too long. The two stories, I didn't really understand. I can imagine when it came out, if that's when you watched it, it would have it blown, blown, you, blown away. you away. Sure, yeah. Right? Uh, it really would have been, you know, the Avengers Endgame <laughs> of, of the time. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And I yeah. gave Avengers uh, Endgame an A+, plus back yeah. in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I give this movie a B-. minus. I'm oh, a little more rough than you. Uh, I I thought the and I think it's especially because I watched this after I watched Lawrence, and so Lawrence will be getting a, a better grade than this. But we'll talk about that afterwards. I think the the chariot scene was really good. The chariot racing scene was very good. I thought everything else was fairly weak, fairly weak. I think it dragged a lot. I think there's a lot that didn't connect. I think there's a lot of stuff that was superfluous and kind of played a little longer. I mean, I think there are uh, there are still stuff that was done relatively well kind of uh, in in short little bits like i thought that scene on the slave ship where the the water floods in right no i think oh i mean i mean the effects of that are good but i mean i think even that tension setting scene when the guy is like testing them yeah, uh, yeah that they yeah. can kind of thing at different row at different tempos and kind of the just like kind of battle of wits almost it, you know of, of endurance I this is a hard cool. movie to really grow, yeah great yeah because that's true. it's a product of its time yes 65 years very ago. much so um, and it's just when you, you know, or to a modern day viewer, it's just hard to yeah. appreciate it the way someone, you know, appreciate when it first was released to theaters, when it was like maybe one of the first movies in color or whatever it was, this epic movie. So it's, always, it's Wizard of Oz. Okay, whatever. But I mean, I gave it a B plus because I mean, it's Good Friday, Jesus. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this guy trying to get. <laughs> Cutting out Jesus from this movie to, to make it a higher grade. Come on. Uh, yes. <laughs> if you cut out all the Jesus from this movie, it would receive a higher grade. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> terrible. <laughs> a terrible person to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Friday. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, as of recording, we are... No, we're on Saturday. Okay. Good Friday was yesterday. So I would have given a better grade yesterday. Oh, my goodness. But, all right. That's our review of, of Ben-Hur. Uh, if you haven't seen... I, mean, I think it's worth it for... People to watch it. I think anybody under twenty who doesn't like movies is gonna. Sk- the first okay. ten minutes are like, nope, click off. off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, maybe don't watch it. Maybe watch it. I don't know. It's a a product of its time. A an epic movie of product of its time. Okay, <laughs> with Jesus. <laughs> All right. Uh, until next time, keep watching things. Let us know if you watched. Let us know what you think about what we think as well. And please like and subscribe. All right. <laughs>